Frank Walk is about as evil as a man can be. Thankfully, the 62-year-old is now in prison where he'll spend the rest of his life. For years before, he'd been free to commit atrocious attacks on women, including rape and murder. And if that isn't horrendous enough, what's truly alarming is we now know Walk's crime spree could have and should have been stopped as soon as it began. But this man was allowed to continue his nefarious ways because of some of the sloppiest police work you'll ever see. It's hard to imagine a greater horror. A man stops to offer a young woman help. She gets into his car thinking he's a good Samaritan, but he's not. He drives her to an isolated home in the countryside of far north Queensland, where she's held captive, tortured and repeatedly raped. Yet remarkably and heroically, after six hours, she somehow manages to escape. I just ran as far as I could run away from him. I didn't care I was naked or not. I was just running for my life to escape. Andrea was never meant to get away from her sadistic attacker. This man, Frank Walk. There's little doubt he planned to murder her. Do you think that he'd set out from his home that night looking for a woman to abduct and rape? Not to rape, to kill. But by outwitting Walk, not only has Andrea stopped a psychopath, she's helped crack one and possibly two murders. When you have two crimes that have distinct similarities, the first thing that makes you wonder is, what else have you done? It's the nature of the beast in, in this case. Only Frank Walk will ever know the true extent of his violence. I just wanted to get out of this nightmare. I just wanted to live. I just wanted to go. But what we can reveal tonight is that Andrea and other women did not have to suffer this predator's evil. Police could and should have caught him years ago. This story begins in July 1999, as far away from North Queensland as is possible, on a lonely stretch of road in the West Australian wheat belt. Teenager Hayley Dodd is walking along the highway between Badjingara and Moora. But then she just disappears. I panicked. I panicked straight away. I just should have gone with her. More than 18 years on, Lisa Fredrickson is still riddled with guilt over the abduction and murder of her 17-year-old friend. The girls had been working as roustabouts at a sheep property when Hayley decided to hitchhike by herself to a family friend's farm. I didn't want her to go alone. What are your last memories of her? before she left that morning? She was running around, getting her stuff ready. I gave her some money to, like some coins to be able to call me when she got there and kissed her on the forehead and said I'd see you in a couple of days. When Hayley failed to arrive at the farm, police quickly launched a search. This, uh, Ross, is likely the last place that uh, Hayley was seen or in this general vicinity. Back then, the lead detective was Eddie Rowe. Right from the beginning, he was convinced they were looking for a body. It doesn't matter how insignificant the information, uh, it may be information that uh, will help us in the long term. But police bosses dismissed Hayley as a missing person completely disagreeing with their cop on the ground. I believe that we were looking at a, an abduction in the best case scenario and a murder in the worst case scenario. With no trace of Hayley, Lisa Fredrickson proved a critical witness. She remembered exactly what the teen was wearing and even sketched a distinctive pair of earrings Hayley had bought just two days before she vanished. I knew what they looked like. 
were just small, about two to three centimetres turquoise bluish stone. Despite reluctance from his superiors in Perth, Eddie Rowe and his team continued their investigation and identified dozens of potential murder suspects in the area. One who stood out was 43-year-old Frank Walk. The groundsman at the local school lived on the same road where Haley was last seen. He only really became a suspect after his housemate came forward. On the morning Haley was abducted, Walk had borrowed his housemate's white Holden ute to go shopping in the nearby town of Moora. But when he returned home, the housemate noticed the vehicle had been damaged. The indicator arm uh, on the vehicle had been broken off. The shopping that uh, Walk had done in Moora had not been put away, it had just been dumped in the kitchen area. Did that raise a suspicion? It's like someone's in a panic to, to get away or get from something they've already done. That suspicion led to police searching Walk's home and the Holden Ute. They seized the car seat covers and took a vacuuming of grime from the footwell. This is the, the log that you keep as an yeah, official this, record. This is my, my personal uh, day book. Eddie Rowe left the police force in 2003, but he's never let go of the case or his notes from the initial forensic inspection of that seized ute. And my notation here is forensic on ute, in brackets, nil result. Do you think it was fair on that basis to assume when you were given that assurance that they'd done a thorough search? My understanding was that they would do a cursory look at the item uh, for later inspection um, in a controlled environment. But incredibly, what we now know is that no further forensic testing took place. Instead, the evidence was placed into storage. At best, this was an inexcusable oversight. At worst, an inexplicable blunder. But it meant a main suspect in Hayley Dodd's disappearance couldn't be held. The investigation stalled and, not surprisingly, Frank Walk fled WA. He moved as far away as he could to far north Queensland, free to strike again. Coming up, Frank Walk's new hunting ground. It's almost like a movie. Hannibal Lecter without the mask. And how this brave woman finally brought him down. He said he liked me because I fought back, and that's when I thought he's done this before to someone else. That's next on 60 Minutes. Frank Walk is an evil man. Back in 1999, he was a suspect in the disappearance and presumed murder of 17-year-old Hayley Dodd in Western Australia. But police bosses there refused to prioritise the investigation and Walk fled the state unnoticed. He moved to far north Queensland. Among the cane fields and dairy farms of the lush Atherton tableland, Frank Walk found a new home here in the tiny town of Miller Miller. He blended in with the locals. Playing pool and drinking at the pub, he even dated a number of the women here. But beneath the surface, there still lurked a dangerously violent and sadistic predator. The rooftop you can see in the distance is um, Walk's residence. Queensland Detective Senior Sergeant Brett Devine first encountered Frank Walk in June 2007. Called to investigate why a naked, terrified woman had run screaming from his house. What do you think he would have done if he'd caught up with her? Well, I don't think she would be talking to us today. Walk's startled neighbours had called police. Some elderly people who live next door, I, th I think they were sitting on their front veranda having a cup of tea and they were confronted by a uh, hysterical naked female bleeding from the head. What do you remember of it bringing you here that night? 
if I was going to live or I was going to die. A decade on from the sickening attack, Andrea is speaking out for the first time. But while she survived Frank Walk, she's still traumatised by how close she came to being his next murder victim. So Andrea, 10 years ago, late at night, this country road, why did you get in the car with this strange man? I thought he was actually being helpful and helping me get to Miller Miller so I can go home. What was it about him that made you trust him? He was very talkative, polite, and he just made me feel um, OK to get a lift from him. After picking Andrea up and offering to drive her into town, Walk said he needed to stop by his remote property to fuel up his car. He convinced Andrea to have coffee with him, but once inside, his friendly demeanour vanished. And when he asked me if I wanted to stay overnight, I said no. And when I looked at the door, I noticed that the door's locked, but it wasn't locked when we first came in. So what happens? I hopped up, I unlocked the door and I said, I'm going. Um, he's caught up to me, he swung my arm around and he started smashing the top of my head uh, with um, uh, a clunk of wood. He was hitting you with an ax handle? Like a club, yes. I feared that he was gonna kill me there and then. With blood pouring down her head, Andrea fought back. After I stopped him hitting with me at the clunk of water, he said I was feisty. He said he liked me because I, I fought back. And that's when I thought he's done this before to someone else. You also said to him, why are you doing this when he was hitting you? He said, this is rape. And that's when he decided to drag me by my hair inside the house. The rope was already in the room where the bed head was. He's tied my wrists very tight. So he had the rope ready? Yes. For the next six hours, Walk raped, bashed and tortured Andrea. But it was his insistence to keep one of her earrings that makes police believe he planned on killing his victim. I, I don't think he ever intended to let her go or, and uh, I don't think he intended to let her live. But as dawn broke, Andrea cheated death. Counting Walk's steps each time he left the room, she started loosening the ropes tied around her wrists. You're in a strange house in the country. What do you do? I hopped up. I ran to the next room and grabbed my wallet so I was able to run through the back door, run out the driveway. He's yelling after me to come back. And because and I was running down a gully, I can hear him echoing to come back. You must have been terrified. I was. I ran all the way to the next house. What happened? I didn't see anyone there, but when I get closer to the house, there's an elderly couple. They're staring at me and I'm standing naked. But you're safe? Yes. Before she escaped, Andrea did something remarkable. She took off the locket around her neck and flung it under the bed. That evidence helped clinch the case against Frank Walk, who pleaded guilty to rape, sexual assault and deprivation of liberty. So this is the locket that sent Frank Walk to jail? Yes. Me throwing that locket underneath that bed proved that I was in that room and he tormented me horrifically. Andrea's case should have been the breakthrough West Australian police needed for their ongoing Haley Dodd investigation. She'd disappeared eight years earlier, and back then, Walk had been a suspect. But when they heard about his crimes in Queensland, the WA detectives seemed nonplussed. In 2007, the West Australian police are notified that Walk has been arrested for the most violent, dreadful rape. At that stage, in 2007, was anything done by West Australian police about that information? No. Um, I, of course, had left the police service at that stage. Uh, my understanding is that notification was placed on the file, pending further information or evidence 
come into hand. So this is a guy who's a couple of hundred metres from where a young girl is last seen by a witness, and then eight years later, he's picked up for a violent, sadistic abduction and rape. Ross, I don't have any answers for you, because to me, it's common sense. It certainly would put the biggest red flag out there. Instead, in that same year, 2007, a police review of the Dodd case falsely concluded that there was no forensic link between Frank Walk and the missing teenager. But remember, the car seat covers seized from the Ute Walk drove the day Haley disappeared still hadn't been properly examined or tested. I'm doing the detective work for them. I'm giving them information and then I've got to chase them to follow it up. Despite Haley Dodd's mother, Margaret, relentlessly hounding police, it seems the case wasn't seen as worth the time or the money. We would just like to find Haley so at least we can lay her to rest and have some peace. Six years later, in 2013, police conducted another review and the evidence from the Holden Ute was finally examined. Within a minute of unfolding the car seat covers, forensic scientists made a startling discovery. Caught in the fabric was a tiny silver earring. It's an exact match. I knew what she was wearing that day. I knew the earrings. It was identical to the one drawn by Haley's friend, Lisa Fredrickson, in the days following the teenager's disappearance in 1999. It looks like it's been bent, doesn't it? It looks like it's been forcibly removed or caught in the car seat, obviously, as he's either pulled her out. Would Haley have put up a fight? She would have been overpowered. She wouldn't be able to fight back, but I hope she did. I just can't believe that this is what brought him undone. A strand of hair was also discovered in the vacuuming taken from the Ute's footwell. It proved a DNA match to Haley Dodd's mum. I was dumbfounded. I could have bawled my eyes out. It was like a wave just washed over me. You know, all of these years thinking, did you do everything you could have done? Did we do, as an organisation, everything we could have done at the time? Former detective Eddie Rowe has always felt troubled by Haley's unsolved murder. The missed evidence remains one of his greatest regrets. Why wasn't the car seat tested when it was taken back to Perth? Essentially because nobody from major crime requested their examination. Why didn't it happen? Caseload, um, money. Do you think that if your bosses at WA Police had given you the resources you were asking for in 1999, this case would have been solved then? Oh, absolutely. They should have been examined. Coming up... Without a shadow of a doubt, there will be others. A creepy connection. The earring you referred to as uh, taking a trophy. And what happened to Lily's mother? I'd just like to think that she went down fighting. That's next on 60 Minutes. Lily Parmenter is in no doubt. Her mum, Katie O'Shea, is dead. But with no body, Lily has nothing but a name on a plaque to visit. It's like she just vanished. The final words that she said to me was, don't ever forget how much I love you and how proud of you I am. What do you think happened to her? I know that she's no longer here. Do you think your mum was murdered? Yes. In December 2005, Katie O'Shea was visiting family and friends in the Atherton Tablelands of far north Queensland when she simply vanished. 
She was known to hitchhike, and police suspect Katie was abducted and killed. And did she wear those earrings all the time? Um, to my knowledge, yeah. Lily was only a teenager at the time, but she's never stopped pushing for the case to be solved. How much would it mean to you to be able to get an answer? I would give anything for answers. She deserves to, to be able to be laid to rest, so to speak. For years, Detective Senior Sergeant Brett Devine searched for a breakthrough in Katie O'Shea's murder. It was 2013 when Frank Walk suddenly emerged as a potential suspect. I received a call from uh, the Special Crime Squad in Western Australia, and it was more along the lines of, um, what can you tell me about uh, Frank Walk? He's a person of interest in relation to a missing person. You know, during the conversation, well, we joined the dots, so to speak. Those dots were the similarities between Hayley Dodd's murder in 1999 and Andrea's rape in 2007. Both victims were hitchhiking and were targeted by Frank Walk in an opportunistic attack. But it was the presence of a single earring in both cases that stunned police. What was the clincher for you that made you realise that there was a link? Oh, definitely the earring. The earring is, is, can be referred to as uh, taking a trophy by an offender. What's it like to realise all of a sudden that there's this breathtaking link in evidence? Uh, probably the first thought is, um, what else have you done? Chilling. It's almost like a movie. Yeah, it's Hannibal Lecter without the mask. It is, isn't it? He's a terrifying character. Police don't yet have enough evidence to charge Frank Walk over Katie O'Shea's disappearance. But they believe there are witnesses who know more. It's been heartbreaking. Someone out there knows something. It, it's a, it, whether it's a, it's a whisper, it's a rumour, if, if it's something. And no one's either got the courage to come forward and say anything, and that, to be honest, that's made me really angry. Because someone died. I'd, I'd just like to think that she went down fighting. For now, Lily takes some small comfort in the knowledge that Frank Walk will most likely die behind bars. Earlier this year, in a judge alone trial, the 62 year old was found guilty of murdering Hayley Dodd. And it was the courageous Andrea whose vital evidence helped convict him. When you close your eyes, you can still see everything that happened that night, can't you? Yes, I do suffer chronic post-traumatic stress disorder and I do suffer flashbacks. But at the same time, even though I have to live with this for the rest of my life, at least I know that he's put away where he cannot hurt anyone ever again. While we know Walk murdered Hayley Dodd, he refuses to reveal what he did with her body and where. It's a wicked defiance that angers Haley's best friend, Lisa Fredrickson. Do you think you'll ever be able to put this behind you? Honestly, I will always feel responsible, and that's just me. We know who done it now. We just need to bring her home. There's one more terrible secret Frank Walk is likely keeping more victims of his violence. And for Eddie Rowe, the former detective who lives with the regret of not catching Walk all those years ago, it's a chilling notion. It was hard. It still gives me goosebumps to, to think about, you know, the what ifs, what if we'd solved it in 1999, the things we, we could have done, the things I could have done personally. Because we know for sure other women who've been hurt. Yes, yeah. And there's very likely others out there. There is, I oh, with, without a shadow of a doubt, there will be others. We asked the West Australian Police to explain what went wrong with its investigation into Hayley Dodd's murder and why it didn't conduct proper forensic testing at the time of her disappearance. 
we were told they had no intention to make any comment about it. If you have information about Frank Walk, especially his time in Queensland, call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000.